you're just not good. You guys just like get together and just like talk shit behind my back. Put everything out on the table. I don't want to be on a team where people are just teammates are talking and getting each other's The only way this is a team is if I get to teach the offense. So if not, then do what you gotta do. Things needed to be said and it was moving forward, but then at the same time, immediately after, you got one motherfucker that's over here laughing. Fuck the camera shit, I'm telling you. What's going on, y'all? We are out here at Kauffman Stadium, home of the Kansas City Royals, here in partnership with the KC Pioneers for the KC Pioneers Boot Camp. And the goal here this week is to get better and prove. Like there's something in physical proximity, metaphorically, leading to becoming more close-knit and tight-knit as a group. Going into Anaheim, our goal was to really start to build a team for Worlds. I thought bringing Ali on would help rub off some of that championship mindset. Like, I think in some ways, he kind of had one foot in, one foot out. You know, because he had previously retired, and you'd probably have to ask him, but there was serious disconnect and almost disdain for each other. I honestly don't think we fuck with each other on the level you need to fuck with each other to win a championship. Um, you don't got to be all buddy-buddy and shit and best friends. When you put that headset on, it's got to be like you're ready to die for each other. It's almost like it starts out as in-game. Somebody doesn't agree with the, the way we play. Somebody doesn't agree with the push or a, a play we called. And then it eventually bleeds into real life where you just hate this guy in real life. And that's where we unfortunately got to in Anaheim. The vibe and the, the energy, the passion, it just fell completely flat. Part of that flat feeling came with Marbs and I think why we ultimately had to let him go. Marvs was an incredible player. I would actually argue he was our best player at Anaheim. It's not that he doesn't have good comms, it's just that he, he's not very loud. And so when we're on land at these tournaments and there's all this background noise, there's a lot of times where you couldn't even hear. And that segues into why we picked up Tony. My name's Anthony Finslow. I go by Tony in game and I'm a professional Halo player for G1. After the Anaheim event, our team kind of broke up. So I hit up Devin in the DMs, asked me to run. I tried with the team for a little bit. I did pretty well. Him and Nate kind of wanted to bring me on. We were right here in Anaheim, and then they had UIU, and Tony was competing right over here. And I couldn't help but hear him yell and scream when he was getting triple kills. Get shit on! Like, and we didn't have none of that. He doesn't have as much experience with Halo, but I see his individual talent, and I've been trying to help him see Halo on a deeper level because I know that you know after he's spent enough time with this game, he's going to be one of the best. I'm surrounded by three veterans who know how to play Halo. I'm kind of just that guy they picked up that just had raw talent, mechanically skilled. Really just trying to take and learn everything I can. I know I'm one of the nastiest players out there. I might not be the smartest at right now, but. When I get a power up in or if I'm in the zone, I can literally just one before and take over a whole game. When it comes to Kyle, he could be the best thing that ever happened to our team. My name is Kyle Elberg. My alias is Swish and I play Halo for G1. He's a hard worker before anything else. Like he's, his work ethic is just insane. He's constantly playing, grinding, watching film. Predevinator is somebody who I had always wanted to play with throughout my career in H5. And I always wanted a chance to play with somebody who's been there, done that, and learn from them and kind of grow. So I watched the documentary as I was like going through all the different teams that offers ahead and just, you know, the way you guys roll and that sort of thing was just incredible to me. It was like being part of a sports team again, like just professionalism and, you know, realness and like a real serious like aura to it. So, I mean, I left Oxygen, honestly, it was more so just the work ethic and how we approach practice. You know, I just didn't feel like that was the group that, you know, I was going to do what I wanted to do with. I mean, my goal is always to win, so I'm never going to tell you anything other than that, just to win as much as we can. Thanks so much to the KC Pioneers and the Royals for inviting us. Let's get to work. Let's fucking go! Oh, fucking go. Good go. shit! You're a shitter! Fucking choke! I'm 
shoes on. They don't deserve it. Oh my god! You keep talking shit! Talk shit! You suck! What the fuck? It's that easy! It's that easy! Let's go! Earn that shit. Oh, about that shit. Fuck out of here. Slap that. Tony, think I'm pulling out. I ain't got words. I just got emotion and energy right now. Huh? Woo! I might go viral. I don't know. <clears throat> That's the loudest I've screamed in a while. Hopefully, I get my voice back tomorrow. But if not, I always got these hands. So catch me. Reset. Um, so round five, we ended up playing Red Wolves. Uh, we go down 2-0 in the series on our worst two game types. Um, things kind of get intense, get heated, some shit talk thrown back and forth between the teams. Um, ultimately, we end up reverse sweeping them and take the series going on to pool play. Yes, yes, yes. Our first day, of, our first game update in Kansas City. We've got G1 up against Quadrant. The pool is up for grabs, but Quadrant have to get the job done here. Talk to me about you know the way that this G1 roster is coming together. Who needs to be stepping up? Where are they at? This team's good, man. This is one of my favorite teams coming out of the open bracket, and they have a lot of talent on their team. The pickup of Swish, massive for these guys. Tony Two Turn, he's got a lot of individual skill too. This is going to elevate their roster to what I think is at least a top 12 team, potentially top eight. First ever match on the main stage as an organization. Huge opportunity to show the world what we got. This is the culmination of everything we've been working on. Honestly, I feel way more calm. It's just close. Like, it's an open issue. I don't know why, but like I belong here. G1 ran the gauntlet, but it shields up. Weapons hot. Here we go. Very successful beginning. 55 points on the board at the moment. Remember, this is G1's first ever main stage performance as well. So there's always going to be that added pressure on their side. And now I feel like G1 have to take advantage of this little bit of momentum they've got hold of. They are 120 down, but we've seen throughout this tournament various times that people can have these incredible comebacks as long as you're playing on the same ball as everyone else. When it is a temporary trip cap, and this is good, you want Quadrant to be trying to run into B here, so you can just continuously slay them. A and B still in control. Quadrant need to get that opening slay they have, but they've lost two teammates. In the meanwhile, make it three. G1 are gonna continue the score. Look as though they can continue this trip cap here. Two go down for G1. Four dead for Quadrant. Four dead, they have one final push. You really hope you're going to be able to spawn, but all four of them are in different directions. G1 looks like they've got it done at the moment. But Quadrant are careless, reckless, and G1 taking full control here. We have a contest on B. Honestly, yeah. dude, once I warmed up, I just ended on a friend. Fucking go, man. Yeah, bro. Fuck these kids. Yeah. But pure adrenaline through the G1 roster because that comeback was something else, and that is why I love Stronghold. I feel, I feel like that's because faster. even when it's 245 yeah, yeah, yeah. to so, G1 knocking on that, that door, Subtitle. they're very quickly getting impatient, looking to kick that door in and take their spot. And SLG is trying to fulfill that as well, and it does look like oh! they're not firing now. It could yes! be a triple as well. Quadrant, once they recognize the players on their own, they will just jump on you, and that team shot oh! is so difficult to play against. And Chick may be starting to heat up. Do oh! it! Chick! Wobbling them wings! It's an overkill! See what Quadrant needed. Triple kill on the other side for SLG. Oh, another overkill! Yeah! Slows down slightly because G1 now are going to be trying to avoid fights, but Chick is more than happy to take those fights. There we go, wrapped up. Quadrant tie up this series one to one. And what a I'll game. Slide back that from that. That's all right, it's a slayer. Uh, weird. Just get the power weapons. 
Yeah. Nothing to separate these two as we head into game three then. SLG and Quadra in a position themselves fantastically to defend here. But this could have opened the game door. Crash. As we see game one crash. player game actually crash. drop out. Game crash. We're going to see Fucking a little bit of a shit. reset there. But one to one. We were going to head into overtime. What's happening? Keep games, keep crashing. No. All party. We had momentum. I don't know. Oh, wow. Nervous reading. <laughs> Can't get too upset about it. We just got to regroup and uh, jump into this next one. Hopefully the game will, uh, you know, work how it's intended this time. So the first crash happened to me. I was like, I had 40 kills the first time. And then I start off the next restart 10 and 1. And then the third one, I think that's when Tony's computer, like, completely fried and they had to switch out computers and there was a huge downtime in between that and I felt like that was definitely the turning point for us in that series. A lot of damage to the overshield, completely evaporated now as he gets eliminated. That flag, flag will be stopped, excuse me, the double kill, triple kill for SLG. They sent him back to the respawn screen and it should be a comfortable cap here for Quadrant. A little bit of a messy run from Fragger, but perhaps he's trying to increase those carry time statistics. Not only that, he's got an overshield as well. We said we needed to see him step up in these objective statistics and he's doing just that. Fragger with the Bulldog. Picks up two. Quadrant are very good on Bizarre Capture the Flag. I mentioned it before this series started. It's one of their better games, and we're seeing why. 3-0 now, 30 seconds left. This game is done. G1, start thinking about game four. Quadrant takes the lead in right, this series. One, that's all right. yeah. Quadrant yeah. looks as though they might have figured out what they need to do. And they are just one game away from solidifying themselves as second in the pool and making sure they stay in the winner's bracket to keep this game very close indeed. A three second game. Tony, back tower, Fry is one. Shaq wants a piece and he's gonna get a piece! Oh! As Tony locks in two. Two go down then. Camouflage for Predeminator. Has to be a huge one for him. He does manage to stop the push to touch. Camo and Sniper Rifle. The body shot connects. Shad, 1v1 here at the ages and pre -Devinator comes out on top. Quadrant are in big trouble going to a game five. G1 playing so, so well. The pressure's coming through, but it's not going to be good enough so far. Only requiring two. Doesn't matter though, does it? pre sends us right. to a game no, five. For all the marbles. Live here. A Kansas City! It's a good start for Quadrant. Not the best for G1, but at least they are still within two. As long as you can stay within two or three of Quadrant here, you are well within your right to take this game. Both these teams trading blow for blow. That's a double kill for Fragger. G1 though, no, their Quadrant can fall apart. Try and get a big double kill, try and get in their heads. Squally gets two, and that at least starts to pull them back into this game, but I tell you what, Fragger denies them. It's been a long old series for these boys, but Quadrant can taste success now at this point. They just need to focus up, and it's right there for them. That player backs down towards straight stairs, and she's got cruel intentions. And he gets the final two, and how fitting is that? If they didn't play the way they played on the Slayer, that could have easily been either a 3-1 or a 3-0, but you know, it is what it is. So I think as a team coming out of the open bracket and the fact that we went deep into Friday night and then had to wake up early Saturday morning, and then the series, you know, obviously that first series of the main stage checked us with all the resets and the game five and shit. So it's like, we never really got time to like recoup, you know, with the personalities we have, like we needed, you know, that 20 minutes to like, talk it over and you know reset mentally because if you don't do that and you go into these games checked like you're just destined to lose no matter what you do after watching g1 fall short against quadrant they Top now series. get an opportunity against g2 to g1 has gotten the better of g2 a few times so as strong as the roster as g2 is it feels like this G1 team may be their kryptonite, and this may be the first step in the right direction for G1's pool play journey. If you look at it with the command of one of the G1 base, putting down loads of damage, teammates cleaning up kills left and right, and Snap already has the flag. 30 seconds into game number one, and G2 caps the flag. Jesus. He's decided to continue to move this flag, so trying to do it all. And I'm sad. Putting that heat wave to work oh with my. the triple kill. Getting back into the series. It's gonna be G2 taking game one like we saw, three to one. It was just a minute on the clock before someone disappeared. And here we go, loading into game number two. Bizarre Slayer starting things off with Tusk on your screen. If it gets taken down, so Overshield will be in the hands of G1. A much better start go. for them. Double kill for Squally right off the bat. Already starting off 2-0 oh in this game with Overshield in his hands. Make it three. Tony continuing to be that main slayer for this team, and they need him now more than ever to get back into this series. And he hears that 
and he is answering the ring of the bell. 49-41 now, G1 finding themselves an overshoot as well. There and you, you can it. bet that they're going to punch their ticket here in game two. They're going to tie this one up. One to one as we're hopping in to recharge Oddball. You need to win two out of three rounds to win the game. Oh, we're starting off with pre Devinator. He's looking to be aggressive bottom control. Already finds himself an assist with a nice melee. Some good damage onto a third. And it's all G1 here early on. And he spots that. Wait, Actually, he no. does not spot that Campbell player. That was only oh on high time. But Devin right there with the shock rifle double kill. Looking for the triple. Oh. Not able to get the overkill, but big plays out of Devin as G1 will win round one. It's solid plays all around for G1. And man. Tony finds two in the kill feed, so it's a 2v2 situation here. Both players trying to push Turbine. Tusk finds the first. Tusk finds the second. All four down for G1. And this could be where the series is determined. Big fight here for Gilkey! Oh! Four shots! Perfect! That they haven't been able to get that last thing. Great to play that one. <gasps> A little bit oh questionable there. Nice double kill for Devin. But here you have Tuss finally running in and getting of that course. last second. Now extending the series two to one. Here we go. Loading in to game number four. Gilkey throwing grenades in that driver. Running into arcade. Trying to capture B. Right off the bat. There's a player in that red room. Gilk with the stick. Hold that for me, Tony. Gilkey with some nice shots on that player balcony as well. So great start for Gilk and the boys on G2. And looking at the scoreboard, ladies and gentlemen, it's a they double the score of G1 right now. 185 and counting to only 99. And G1's backs are against the wall right now. Three members down from G1. A fantastic job by South. Gilkey now stops that B push. Looking for the double. And that's going to do it here. G2 are going to take the series 3-1 to one over G1. Going into the GT series after the tough game five loss against Quadrant, we had to literally play right after we lost. I felt like our energy levels were a lot lower than what they should have been because of that. We could just really look and see the way we were playing and realize that like we were just really burnt. G1 going down twice back to back's got a hurt, but I think this competitor might be their opportunity to bounce back either way. We'll find out right here on Streets. Tony's here, Tony's there, Tony's everywhere. Three down goes Cruelty and Tony, but it's a Bulldog to work. And they're up 1 0 in the series up against Latin America's very own Cruelty. And they're just surrounding Cruelty. Uh -huh. They're making them feel their presence, and it's really tough to deal with that. At this point, oh. if you're Cruelty, this is feeling like a 4v5. You see the team now pinching the remainder of the players in Elevator. That's a double for Predevinator. 50 to 31. They'll avoid a stake, but you can see G1 are just having a fun time. 117 on the board for G1. And oh my god, the shots out of Predevinator. They're so confident at this point, right? G1, they put it together for a very confident 3-0 finish and one that they needed to give them some momentum in the remainder. So I think Cruelty uh, personally was a place for us to like catch our footing going into playing EU. It was a quick 3-0. I felt like they were good, like they were making the right plays. I just felt like their skill level um, just ultimately fell short where our team was in that series. So going against United, we knew they would be the toughest match in our pool. They are the first seed. Right. We know these guys like to just hold shit down. So I think we can actually beat them at their own game. And when we need to hold lanes, watch angles, help each other out. And then when the emphasis is on, we get that break kill, let it rip. Yeah. I mean, if our comms, and carry over from like yeah. the last series and what you know, yep. the series is going to be, then it'll be a lot smoother. Honestly, we just came out flat again. We kind of just got rolled and just got 3 0 I mean, they had our number. We had two very close games against them, uh, the first two games. Ultimately, I just think that they had more discipline and a better setup when it came to end games, uh, better execution because of it. To me, I mean, I think it just goes back to that first series versus Quadrant. Unfortunately, when you're a new team, like we hadn't been together that long, you don't necessarily have the composure that a lot of these teams that have been playing for years and years have. Those games at EU were very close. We definitely choked two of them, the Slayer and then the Stronghold. By the CTF, I think we were completely checked and there was no hope of winning that game. We rack. We'll turn starts now, let's go. I want to see you guys regain the fire and the fucking pit of passion that we saw right there in the open bracket. We got yeah, however many sure. minutes until the champ bracket starts yeah. to regroup, regroup, regain, yeah. and figure out what the fuck we were doing yesterday. And, yeah. and I would even say up until this very moment, and try to recapture that. We went one and three, so we got the fourth seed in our pool, and that put us into losers round two against Louisville Red Wolves again. Honestly, we kind of just sent them to bed. It was just a fast 3-0. Like the last series, didn't really think anything of it. 
Come on, he's running you guys. Nice. Yes. Now we got blue cards. Blue cards are bad for that name. Two, two cards, guys. Two, two, one. Two, one, two, one. Shit on here! Right here! Right here. Do it. Woo! I fucking own you, kid! I'm your fucking dad, boy! <laughs> Woo! He's nervous! He's nervous! Let's go, Tony! Get the fuck out of here, pussy! Look at me! Look at me when I'm talking to you! Look at me, too! I saw that! I saw you looking at me! Yeah! Let's fucking go. Let's go, Kyle. Rest up. We'll go again tomorrow. Let's go. I fucking own you, kid. I'm your fucking dad, boy. <laughs> yeah. I talk shit. I mean, somebody's got to be the villain. Welcome back, Halo fans from all across the world, and welcome back, Kansas City Arena. Everyone in the house who's been cheering on in its championship Sunday, folks, and we're going to be crowning a champion. But first, I have a little something extra up my sleeve, and that, of course, is our Astro Bracket Breakout, and it's going to be G1. Winning Breakout Team was huge for us. It was the first time a lot of people got to see the G1 logo, got to see really what we're all about. We actually got breakout player as well through Tony. Huge props to him. He deserved it. He was playing with intensity all throughout the weekend. I was trying to gas him up as much as possible. Dude brought it. And every time you saw him, he was talking shit. And really everything we saw from Tony this weekend was was part of why we brought him on to G1 was to bring that intensity. Shout out um, everyone on G1, our girlfriend, and anyone who talked shit to me in the past, you'd suck it. Hey, what's up? G1 is here to play. It felt really good to finally be able to play on Sunday again, you know, championship Sunday. It's kind of the whole point. Um, our first match on Sunday was against PK, Pittsburgh Knights, which is a uh, top Mexican team. Watch the chase! Watch his back! my breath we just wrapped up an incredible game five series with mexico's number one team ggs to nice gg but we move on to play the send for top eight they're shit they're shit top 12 baby all right so going to our match for top eight we played number one eu team which was ascend obviously this is the same kind of thing with quadrant and them they've been teaming together like those kids were together in h5 so they have a lot more teamwork so i knew they were going to be a very tough team
drive you. Let me drive you. We actually um, were tied 1-1 for, I'd say, 75% of the, actually, I'd say 95% of the game. And then they got uh, a late cap on us. And then as overtime was about to start, we actually um, killed two in their base. And as we pulled the flag, one of them actually lagged out of the game. It's very unfortunate that that lag got occurred because anytime somebody leaves or joins the game, it does alter like the game in some form. And I believe they got some weird funky spawn behind two people as they're running the flag while it was about to go into overtime. So, you know, pretty, pretty unfortunate, but I also think that we beat ourselves. So I can't really be too angry about it. But they stopped the fucking flag, so they just the fucking win. Tony was about to stop the guy that got the fucking flag. And then we get to the 